Well, it's a heritage brand. It has a lot of people who love it, a loyal following. Um, and it's always, I think, striven to provide specific kind of quality, not just quality, not just luxury. But uh, I think the, the usefulness uh, of, the, of the watches is something is at the core of what Fabuluba stands for. So it's not just pretty, it's not just beautiful, not just one thing, but it's, it's very specific to particular needs, which is something that I like. The one that I'm wearing right now, the uh, Veda Harpoon, and I think because I, I wore it recently on this dive in Iceland that you know about, and that's actually where I really experienced uh, a watch, any watch, in the environment that it was built for. And that is fantastic. And to see the kind of support, the kind of uh, um, experience that I had with the watch, that was, that was really remarkable. I don't really like gadgets that much. I'm not really a kind of person who looks uh, at technology or something that could save me or uh, even better my life. I'm, I'm more of a, a person who believes in my own faculties, in my own abilities, and I don't like to take support. But where it is necessary and where it can enhance whatever you're doing, I mean, and if it comes together, you know, it's like a, it's an integration. It's like all your senses, it becomes one of your senses. You know, it's like if my mind and my body are working together rather than opposing each other, I know I can give 100% or do 100% or achieve 100%. And it's the same with something that you use, a piece of equipment, and that is so specialized to what you're doing, it becomes one of your senses. And that enhances your experience and your achievement, or whatever you call it, to 100%. Where well, the thought was horrifying, because I, uh, when Favreluba, the people at Favreluba came to me and said that, you know, why don't you try this dive? Because I wanted to, to do a long distance swim, but I wasn't able to do it because of some logistic issues. And they said, why don't you do this dive? And they said it's in uh, the Silfra Rift and uh, it's two degrees, the temperature of the water. And I was like, what? I don't like water that is below 18 degrees, you know? I love to dive. I dive a lot in the Indian Ocean and the Pacific and it's beautiful. I've been scuba diving for more than 25 years now, but uh, two degrees. But then the more I thought about it, it, it wasn't just the cold. You know, two degrees is not cold. Two degrees is an extreme. 10 degrees is cold, 15 degrees is cold. Two degrees is another world. It's another life. So I said, I have to do it. I have to experience this. And it was scary. Thinking about something that you think is difficult is always scary. But once you're there, um, and there was a photographer with me because we wanted to take pictures, and uh, he was equally nervous about it. He hadn't, he hadn't been diving in, that, in those uh, circumstances before. <coughs> so everybody around me was like, okay, we are doing this together. And only the, the guy who was our guide was experienced, nobody else. And it was, uh, it was fun, eventually, because um, to really pit yourself against something that you can't imagine, and then uh, enjoy it, is an incredible experience. Yeah, and it's, it's like I was, uh, you know, I did my first half marathon, and, and this was 17 years ago, and at that time, not a lot of people were running in India. And everybody told me it's going to be really tough. You know, you're 38 years old, you're going to run 21 kilometers, you never run in your life. It's going to be hot, you're going to get cramps, you're going to faint, you're going to die. And I was also thinking the same things because everybody's telling me this and it must be true. And it's like everybody tells us when you're trying to do something new or something that, uh, that is scary. Everybody tries to dissuade you and, and, and scare you even more. But when I actually did it, it was a fabulous, I mean, incredible experience. It just gave me the understanding of myself that I had lost, that I'm actually capable of so much that I deny myself because I'm scared. I don't allow myself to think. I imagine that it's going to be not fun. 
not enjoyable so you have to do stuff that uh, helps you mentally so of course in iceland i had a suit a wet suit and of course when you when you dive in warm water you you have like a 2 mm suit or a 3 mm suit this was a 7 mm suit 7 mm of neoprene and that is tough to even wear like even to wear a normal wet suit you know you have to struggle into it if it fits well and this was a 7 mm wet suit i could not get it on on my own i had to have people helping me to get the suit on and even then i thought you know when they pulled the suit over my head i thought my neck was going to dislocate it was so tough to even wear that suit but of course we want to avoid the uh, uh, dying of cold <laughs> Uh, I mean, hypothermia is is a very real risk. Then you have to wear something like that. You need well. Normally, they drive uh, they dive in that kind of temperature in a, in a dry suit, which means I could be driving in clothes like this, and the dry suit keeps everything absolutely. You can, you can dive in a in a tuxedo, you know, with that dry suit on. So that doesn't allow any water to go in. But in a wet suit, as we know, the water gets in. It kind of your your body temperature warms up the water, and there's a nice insulation. but 2 degrees of water doesn't get warmed up by your body so eventually your body is just losing heat your feet are getting colder your hand arms are getting colder your your your, bo- your body is just getting uh into a space where you don't want it to be and my face my face was so cold because that was the only part of me that wasn't inside the suit i couldn't even speak to the photographer it was blah, 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 blah. you know we both were going to the level like this because you cannot feel anything your entire face is numb so it was it was different so we dive there were two dives that we did on one day which was the kind of uh, the rehearsal dive we said let's do one let's see how it goes and so we can plan the perfect shots that we want for the next day so the first day we well uh, i i was in the water for about i think 40 minutes and it was it was i don't think we got we got one picture actually on the first day which is a beautiful photograph and uh, that kind of prepared me for the second day the second day then wasn't tough at all you know your mind really plays so many games with you that once because it's scared your mind is naturally cautious and once it's 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 relaxed and it's comfortable then everything becomes really really easy for any kind of effort that you want to make any work you want to do anything that you want to achieve if your mind is relaxed and comfortable you will do better So the second day was actually much better. I stayed in the water for about an hour and a half, which the guide said, you know, is like unbelievable. You've just been in the water twice and you stayed an hour and a half. I mean, he said something which I can't repeat here because it was yeah, but it was a compliment. <laughs> so I was I was quite happy about that. And we got some really amazing pictures and apart from the pictures, the experience for me was beyond beyond words. 